Okay, so this is our the second run of the first part of the series on postural um, pain management. Um, and this class will specifically cover how we can find more comfort in our bodies while we're spending more time in front of the computer or um, our phones kind of connecting with people in this very strange time um, over virtual means. So you might be finding that we're just more closed in um, and having more um, kind of muscular pain. So this should help make us feel lighter, more aligned at the end of this session. You should feel much better and have a better awareness and coordination in your body. So um, that's my hope for you guys. Um, so a couple things. So this class, I'll be cueing you verbally. Uh, I'm not gonna demonstrate the movements and that's kind of a Feldenkrais by design. Um, so there's really two main differences between a Feldenkrais class and um, a traditional exercise class like a yoga class or something you might have been to in, um, in the past. Um, in a Feldenkrais class, we really encourage you to take everything really slowly, reducing your muscular effort in order to better coordinate your body. So it's really more about the experience of doing the movements um, rather than achieving the end result of a particular posture, okay? Um, and this will make more sense as we get going. So just really be mindful of how you're feeling in the work and um, try not to push into any sort of strain. And I'll be reminding you many, many times as we go through. Okay, um, I mentioned that I'm not gonna be demonstrating, but if I am able to see you and I notice that you're kind of confused, I'll, I'll try and demonstrate something over here so you can see like what we're, what we're doing. And a few tips to keep in mind. This is more of like a moving meditation than an exercise class. Um, you're gonna keep all of your movements slow and unstrained. Just be curious with the work. I got someone else coming in. One second, please. Hi, Aga. Going through my spiel. Um, you're gonna have fun. It really, we're just um, seeking pleasure, really not perfection. So just play with it, explore, discover what you can in your body. Just be curious. Take breaks as you need to. And um, really, if you find that I'm asking you to do something and it's painful or not comfortable, just don't do it. Make it smaller, imagine it. Just, yeah, this, we're not here to make pain, so. If it doesn't feel right in your body, don't do it. Okay. And August, since you came in a little late, I just wanna make sure that you are set up. You have a hard chair to start with and that you have a place to lay down. You don't have to have your camera on. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. Um, yeah, but I kind of went through my spiel. Basically, in a nutshell, take it slow. Don't do anything that's painful. Be curious. You got it. Okay. Okay, so let's get going. So everyone's sitting in a chair. Um, since this class is kind of designed around the idea of sitting in your work from home desk space, we're gonna start in the chair as a reference. And when you get there, scoot to the edge of the seat so that you have your feet flat on the floor. We're just gonna get an idea of how you feel in your body right now. So just get a general sense of how you're sitting. I'm gonna be talking about the pelvis a lot in this class, so I wanna define what that is for those of you that may be don't know kind of what exactly that entails. The pelvis is the collection of large bones at the base of the spine. Okay, it's what you're sitting on. If you feel right below your waist, you have those kind of wide bones on the side. That's the side um, of your pelvis. They join in the back at the sacrum or kind of near the tailbone, which is the base of your spine. And at the bottom underneath um, is your sits bones. So sitting at the edge of um, a hard chair is a nice place to feel that. So. We're gonna talk about that pelvis. The pelvis is that whole section, okay? 
Okay, so as a reference, I'm just gonna have you slowly turn and look over your right shoulder. And then your left. I'm just gonna notice if one side feels different than the other. We're gonna do this a few times, just make it easy. Just noticing the amount of movement that's coming from your neck or your spine, your pelvis. And you may notice that right now, a lot of the movement's coming from one area and maybe not so much from another. So just notice right now how um, the movement is spread throughout your system or not, without straining or pushing into anything that's too effortful. Okay, and um, as you do maybe one or two more, just notice what you can see comfortably in either direction without any strain. And I suppose this only really works if you're not moving this chair at any time during this class. <laughs> so um, if you keep the chair in the same spot, we would come back to this and you can see if you have any maybe improved range of motion by way of your peripheral vision. Okay. So when you have an idea of that, just file that away. You're gonna head to your um, place on the floor or if you're more comfortable on a bed, that's fine. But um, floor is best. So come to the floor, you're gonna lie on your back. You can have your legs long or knees bent if that's more comfortable for your lower back. You guys are doing a great job at setting up your cameras. Thanks. So settle in there. If you feel like you need something under your head, if you feel like you're straining your neck to be in this position, um, you can fold up a towel or a blanket. You want something kind of flat nothing really puffy like a pillow just something to give a little support if you feel like you need it for comfort right now to place under your head and you're going to be on your back face up towards the ceiling and just settle in good you can have your eyes closed and notice the changes in your body efforts as you change your relationship with gravity now that you're on your backside versus vertically upright against gravity. We'll just do a quick body scan. Just notice which parts of you are giving their weight to the floor. Some parts may easily give themselves to the floor. Others may gradually be settling into the floor. Some areas may seem determined to keep the same level of muscular holding or activity. You may find that in the shoulders or the neck, maybe the low back. Could be anywhere, depending on your personal history. Just kind of scanning from the weight of the head on the floor. It's usually a heavier contact point. Usually there's a lighter sensation or a space underneath where the neck meets the floor. Moving down the spine, we have our rib cage. It's another point of heavier contact typically. Notice right side of your rib cage and shoulder girdle versus the left side. If there's any differences side to side as far as the sensation of your perceived weight against the floor. Moving down into the low back, another space like the neck, which might have a little bit of a raised open air space there from the floor. And then the pelvis is another heavy area. So just check in how that feels right now. And we'll just take this as a personal reference point as we progress through the session. I'm gonna have you now turn your attention to your breathing. There's no need to use any special breathing techniques right now or any judgment on how you're breathing. Just want you to play with the idea that you could perceive an internal pressure in the chest cavity that when you inhale, 
you can feel that pressure pushing on the back of the sternum or the inside surface of the breastbone. And that pressure is also pushing on the inside surface of your spine, your upper spine. So you're really expanding that um, rib cage towards the ceiling at the same time as you're expanding towards the floor on an inhale. Try that a few times. Breathing in. And out. Now broaden your attention away from your midline area and notice if there's a sense of your ribs moving in a sideways direction for breathing. Does the breath seem to fill up the structures inside of the shoulders? Is it the same from one shoulder to the other? Let's just make note of how this feels now before the class starts. Okay. So take a breath. We had someone coming in, so I'm just gonna, while you're, <laughs> while you guys are just feeling your breath, I'm gonna just make sure that Emily knows we're laying down on our backs. You're gonna do everything slowly. You're not gonna do anything in, that runs into pain. Be mindful of your body during this class. Okay, so you're gonna bring your attention to your head now. Gently roll your head on the floor. A really easy range, no strain. This might even mean that you roll your head significantly less than you normally can. If you're finding even a stretch of the muscle or a strain, just don't go into those areas. Keep it easy and smooth. And is it easier to one side? It's common to have a bias. Notice the sensation of quality of movement here as we start. And then rest in the center. And go ahead and bring your feet to standing. So knees are gonna bend. You're just gonna put those feet underneath your knees. And notice how that kind of map of pressures on your back went, might've gone through some changes. If you weren't paying attention, which why would you? <laughs> Go ahead and lengthen your legs long again. Notice how that changes the pressure on your pelvis and back and then bend your knees again. Just see how that changes things a little bit. We're gonna start here. You're gonna straighten one leg, your choice. One knee stays bent, foot on the floor, one leg long. Great. So the knee that's bent, that foot, you're gonna press into the floor gently. This will tilt the pelvis towards that long leg side of the body. Good, you're gonna let that bent knee maybe tilt inward slightly. Just pouring the weight of the pelvis over to the side. You're gonna do this movement quite a few times, just over and then back to start. It's kind of toggling. Remember, this is a tilt or a roll, not a lift. We're not doing a half bridge exercise. We're just rolling that pelvis to the side and down. And notice what's happening with that long leg. Can you give it permission to roll outward when the pelvis rolls? That knee might soften a bit. Yeah. And you can take a little break with your legs in that same position, just flat on your back. So Feldenkrais work, we do a lot of repetitive motions, okay? Um, the idea is not to, that we're not trying to do a certain number of repetitions, just for the purpose of completion. We repeat these movements with the intention to expand your awareness each time. Okay, so I'll be directing your attention to various body parts um, as you go through the work. And this is with the um, intention to enhance your internal body image. Okay, so um, I'm gonna, every time I ask you to do a little movement, you're just gonna lazily do that movement quite a few times 
um, taking breaks as you need to. Okay. This time with your legs in that same configuration, so one leg long, that same knee bent, I'm gonna push through that foot just like you did before, but see if you can keep that bent knee standing in the vertical so that knee kind of points straight up to the ceiling rather than bowing in towards your midline and then bring that pelvis back down flat. Yeah, and you can do that a few times. And you'll notice in this, this way, without letting that knee tilt into the midline, it almost um, has a sense that that hip joint on that bent knee side is yawning open as you tilt that pelvis. There you go, nice. And then when you've done that enough times to be interesting to you, <laughs> can lick, lengthen both legs long. Take a rest. So we um, offer a lot of rest breaks like this in a Feldenkrais class. And the idea of these breaks is really to stay present and listen to the sensations, observing yourself as things start to change. So remember which knee you had bent. You're gonna bend that same knee, foot flat on the floor. You're gonna do that same movement where you're pushing through that foot, rolling that pelvis, kind of pouring it over to that long leg side. But each time you push that foot into the ground, this time you're gonna just change the position of the foot on the floor, maybe at a different space. So you might bring that foot that's flat on the floor a little farther away from your bottom, push from there a couple of times, closer to your bottom, just playing with how that changes maybe the power, the effort, the range of motion as you're tilting the pelvis over to the side. Yeah, just where it's easy. And bring it out to the side, into the midline. And then you're gonna end up finding a place eventually where you feel like it's really, you have that nice skeletal alignment where you're really doing minimal effort muscularly to tilt that pelvis with pushing your foot into the ground. Good. Now, once you find that place, you're gonna position your foot there that ideal spot for you, it's different for everybody. We're all built slightly differently. Good, and now the next time you push through that foot, til tilting that pelvis to the long leg side, see if you can let your head roll to the side that your pelvis is rolling to. Yeah, that same direction, just lazily. Do that a few times and see how that changes that sensation. So the head is rolling the same direction as your pelvis. So if you're pushing through that foot, that long leg is rolling outward and that head is rolling to that same side that the pelvis is rolling towards. Good. So I want you to resist the temptation to actively roll your head here. See if you can just make it a passive motion guided by really the weight of your pelvis pouring over to the side. It ends up turning all the spinal vertebrae and eventually that gets up to your neck, which will turn that head. Yeah. Take a break when you feel like you need to come back to it. So these classes really are the most effective and most profound when people respect their limits and move where it's really easy and comfortable. I mean, it's not like our usual exercise attitude. We usually, you know, like more pain, more gain or whatever. Um, but that's really, this is what's effective in um, introducing new healthier patterns of movement and integration into our nervous system by respecting our bodies here. Go ahead and rest, legs long or, whatever's comfortable for you. 
Yeah, or both knees bent is perfect. I'm just gonna gently roll your head side to side again. Are there any sensations that you're feeling now that tell you you've only been working with the one side of your body so far? Yeah, how quietly do you need to move in order to become aware of these differences? Okay, great. And when and if you're ready, you're gonna switch your legs. So whichever leg was long is now going to be bent. That foot is going to be flat on the ground. Great, other leg stays long. You know the movement by now. You're gonna push into that foot, rolling that pelvis towards that long leg. And so you understand the movements now, um, so we can really get into a little more details of awareness as we work with this side. So I'd like you to follow that weight transfer throughout your body. You push through that foot, it moves the pelvis over, rolling that long leg. That orientation of the belly button changes. How far up can you feel this movement in your chest? What is your head doing? You make this easy, lazy, yeah, and you can move your foot around, see what's the ideal spot for it on this side. How does the placement of the foot affect how that long leg rolls? How is the spine and ribs involved in this movement? Let's see if you can do a couple rounds if you haven't already with that knee staying pointed directly to the ceiling, yawning that hip open on that bent knee side. Yeah. And if you at any time feel like you're getting a strain in your low back, make it smaller or see where you can invite some softness. Usually that's around the shoulders, around the upper ribs, the head and neck. Let that go so that it just rolls really nicely with you as you push through that foot and rolling yourself, almost like you're gonna roll onto your side. And rest when you're ready. Why don't we all just take a little rest? Legs long. And as I said, rests are important. Um, in this work, really, it's a time for your nervous system to take everything you just gave it, all these new options for movement. It's integrating it into your system. So these rests are necessary, even if you don't feel like you've been exerting yourself. Your nervous system has learned quite a bit in the last, you know, 10 minutes. This time you're gonna bend both knees, standing both feet on the floor. Gently roll your head side to side. See how that feels. Good. Now find your head in the middle, just resting in midline. You're gonna roll your eyeballs in their orbits side to side so you can keep your eyelids closed. And then as you're rolling your eyes, could you invite your head to follow? So maybe the next time your eyes roll in their orbits to the right, your head just lazily follows to the right. And then eyes lead yourself over to the left, head follows. Do that a few times, just being conscious to lead with the smooth movement of the eyes. Relax your jaw, tongue. Just lazily pouring one way and then pouring the other way until it begins to feel like the movement of the head is really passive. Yeah, 
And the next time your eyes fall to one side, leave them there at that corner. Your eyes stay there. And just let your legs gently tilt left and right with your eyes staying at that one side. And how can you let your head roll easily left and right with your legs while keeping your eyes to one side? This is a bit of a brain teaser. It's a few times. Being mindful of any tension that might be creeping in around the brow or the jaw. Take breaks as needed. Why don't you everyone just have a break in this position on your back, eyes just gazing behind your eyelids towards the ceiling. Um, so the one thing about our eyes is neurologically, the, um, the muscles of the neck and upper back and eyes are really highly connected. Um, so we talk a lot about eye strain um, or eye pains with being in front of our computers and how that connects with our neck pain. So really what we're doing here is trying to almost unwind that package of your the habits that people um, develop where their eyes and neck all move together. So if we can unwind that, then we can relearn new habits and it really takes the strain off the neck and eyes as we get going. So another way to put that is sometimes we move the eyes, the habit is that the neck tightens, the shoulders tighten, the jaw tightens, and um, this will help kind of unwind all that. Good. So we're gonna go the other side. Eyes are gonna move to the other side that you weren't looking at before. And push with your feet one at a time to gently tilt to the left, to the right. Can you do this so the head rolls without interference, just like a skeleton would? And you may have to search around to see where you can let go. It might be the jaw tightening or the hands gripping. The action comes from the feet and the head just follows along. And breathing easily. Good. And you're just going to rest when you're ready, when you're done playing with that. Rest with your head in the center. And with your eyes closed, you're just gently going to roll your eyes side to side in their sockets and see if there's any difference in the range of motion from before. You can then begin to allow your head to follow your eyes a couple rounds. Rolling the eyes to the right, maybe head follows, and then over to the left. And then just rest here on your back, legs long. Just reset. Okay. And now you're gonna, everyone's gonna be um, doing the same leg this time. So <laughs> we're gonna do lots of rights and lefts. Hopefully we, we all won't get confused. So everyone leave your left leg long, bend your right knee, bring that foot to stand. Great. Now bring both arms straight to the ceiling, like you're hugging a big beach ball in front of you. Great. Identify your left hand, wrap that hand under your right arm in the region of your armpit. Perfect. You may even be able to reach around for that right shoulder blade, possibly. Just a nice, gentle um, connection there, no need to grip. And then that top arm, that right arm, is just gonna lay lazily on top of the, um, the left arm. Just, yeah, exactly, like you're Got a nice hug going. So just rest that. See how I'm getting confused. Your, your right arm on top of your left. Perfect. Okay, so you have your arms in this little embrace. You're gonna use that left hand that's under your armpit to gently pull yourself over to the right, guiding your torso 
towards the right, like you're rolling your body. Did I say that correctly? Yeah, towards your, oh no, here we go. I'm doing it with you and I'm getting confused. Everyone, correct. Left hand is under, right armpit. You're grabbing your right shoulder blade, yes. You are guiding yourself to the left, sorry, yeah. So like you're pulling yourself over, perfect. Everyone's on it now. <laughs> Yeah, so just a gentle pull, guiding your torso at that right shoulder blade over. Yeah. And then we're just gonna release and come back. Do that a few times. And so you're just kind of hugging yourself. Good, so we are all rolling towards that long leg side, towards that left leg, if we're getting confused. Okay. Now take a break on your back. Just everything stays as is, but you're just flatting your back. Great. So think before you move this time. Imagine now that you wanna reach for something over to your left side. So you're gonna think of looking to the left with your eyes leading, and then your head will roll to follow. As you do so, you'll imagine that right hand lazily reaches towards that left side. Exactly. Good. So let's do this in, in real life. You're gonna bring the eyes towards the left, the head follows going towards the left. You're gonna reach that top right arm like you're reaching for something over there. And you're gonna use your other hand to help guide that rib cage, rolling it over to the side. That's it. I think some people are getting it. And if you don't understand, that's okay. <laughs> These movements are designed to really trip us up because you can't, when have you ever done this? You have no habitual pattern for this. So this is how we retrain our nervous system by putting them in these bizarro situations and teaching the body how to move in a really efficient way. Good. And take a little break. Everyone just legs long, arms long, just rest. Okay, we're gonna come back to the same configuration. So your right knee is bent, foot flat, left leg is long. You got it, left arm underneath right arm. Perfect. You're going to reach that top arm out to the side like you're reaching for something out there, guiding yourself in a roll. And the next few times you do this, See what your um, standing foot can help you with. So that right foot can push through the floor and maybe give you a little bit more power. Yeah, use the forces of the floor to help roll yourself over. Nice. Great. We do that a few times. Maybe this movement is making a little more sense. The second time you're trying. And just as um, for a, an example or a um, experiment, our nervous system likes comparisons, do a few rounds where you're reaching towards that side, but don't push with your foot and see how that is different and how that makes maybe your breath change. And then try a couple with your foot and see how that just makes it seem a little less effort when you're using your foot. Great. Awesome. Okay, everyone rest both legs long, arms long by your side. Breathe here. Just notice what's the feeling in your chest as you let go of that hug. 
maybe a bit more expansive. How your breath is coming now. So this time we're switching it up. You're gonna bring your left knee, bend it. Left foot on the floor, right leg stays long. Bring those arms to the ceiling again. Identify your right hand, wrap that underneath your left armpit area, and then just let that um, left arm drape lazily over the top. Great. So gently with that right hand, you're just gonna pull or roll yourself over to the side, just in the opposite of what we did on the other side, guiding the left side ribs and release and come back to a loose hug on your back. I'm gonna do this a few times. We kind of now know what that foot can do for us, that standing foot. So you can play with helping this movement of rolling by pushing into that left foot. And so at, at first the goal isn't initially to try and make your two sides equal. You're just gonna first observe and be curious about it. You can ask yourself, you know, what am I doing on this side that I'm not doing on the other? It's really more that you're directing your awareness and seeing what you observe about the differences than trying to force yourself to make them the same. Because if you're forcing, you're just gonna go back into your habit and that doesn't have the same lasting effect of kind of retraining our bodies to move with ease. You can pause in the same configuration if you can stay here on your back, arms crossed, left knee bent, right leg long. You're going to start the movement from your eyes. So you're gonna, eyes are gonna look over to the right, head follows, that turns the torso also to the right. And then eventually you'll feel it going down to your pelvis. That left foot can help guide your pelvis over. Like you're gonna roll over onto that right side of your body eventually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then back down. Yeah. I'm gonna do this a few times, always leading with the eyes. Just go as far as you can with ease. Really being sure that that head is truly being supported by the floor. If you notice that you feel like you're having to lift your head up against gravity, make the movement smaller. You really want the neck muscles to have a chance to be relaxed. This is a passive movement. Yeah, good. And now if you um, need a break, go ahead, both legs long. You know, why doesn't everyone do that so we're all on the same page? Both legs long, arms long by your side. And breathe. Just notice how you're feeling now that we've done both sides. You might notice a little bit more of a symmetry, one side to the other. I'm going to bend both knees, feet flat on the ground, gently rolling your head side to side, checking in with the quality of movement now. And just noticing the eyes. Imagine you could perceive gravity working on your pupils. So each time your nose comes off the midline, your eyes fall downhill towards one side, and then your eyes fall downhill towards the other side. Invite your tongue and jaw to have a kind of downhill weight on them as well. So you're gonna rest here, head in the middle, knees stay bent. You're gonna hug yourself either way. I don't care which arm is on top, just pick an arm. Yep. Great. Breathe here. Just feel that space between your shoulder blades. 
Can you invite the breath into the back? Relaxing your neck and jaw here. Just a really nice light grip with your hands. And so now in this position, you're gonna use your hands to kind of roll or cradle yourself side to side. Just make it comfortable, enjoyable. Once you get the idea, you can make it larger back and forth. Maybe pulling one shoulder blade away from the spine and then the other shoulder blade away from the spine. And how does this relate with your pelvis? And your, how can your feet help? You might notice that one foot pushes into the floor to help you roll to one side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And see if you can keep your knees more or less pointing towards the ceiling, even as you let your pelvis roll. Is it possible that you can go side to side with one foot pushing a little bit? Yeah. Do a couple trials side to side. Taking breaks as you need to, of course. And when you're ready to come back to it, or if you're still playing with it, the next couple times we do this, I'd like you to think about doing this movement sequentially. So you're gonna start by looking right, then the head follows, then the shoulders, then you push with the left foot. So each part moves alone before you engage the other part, and you come back to the center and do the same with the other side. You're leading with the eyes, then the head follows, then the arms and shoulders. Good, and then you're pushing with the foot, which will roll the pelvis. And as you get more comfortable, this movement can get bigger. The hand may open and almost reach along the floor as you roll farther. Yeah. And if you feel like the hand that's underneath is getting crushed as you roll onto that rib side, you can just simply remove the hand and reach that open palm along the floor. You don't have to keep that grip, yeah. Good. Just make it easy, like you're just rocking yourself to sleep like a little baby. <laughs> so continue this, but reverse it. So you're gonna start with the feet. So you're gonna push with one foot, twist the pelvis, then the shoulder, then the head, then the eyes. Come back to center and do the same thing on the other side. Yeah, and after you've done this a few times, clearly distinguishing between all the steps, you can begin to allow it to become more pleasurable and integrated. So you're really not worrying about the different parts, but you're just enjoying the sensation of rolling your whole self side to side. Yeah, and especially just being sure that your head continues to take support from the floor, eliminating any extra action from the neck. Great. And when you're done with that, just um, keep your knees bent, but bring your arms by your side. And just move your eyes gently from side to side again. How far can you look now? Did this kind of cradling movement affect how far or how smooth your eyes could go? Or affect the symmetry of your range of motion of your eye gaze? So leave the eyes, just roll the head left and right. See how easily it's rolling now. There might be a little more smooth range or less jerkiness. And you might even be able to make a distinction of actively rolling your head and letting your head be moved passively. Right. And then just rest with your head in the middle, both legs long. One last 
We'll rest on the floor before we get up. Get a general impression of how you're lying here. Comparing the sensations of your backside as it makes contact with the floor now versus the beginning of class. You might feel a little more ironed out or those areas where you might have been holding some tension, hopefully have melted or given way a little bit. Check in with your breath. How it's filling the chest. If it's any different than before. And before you get up, I want to just make sure that you get up slowly. If you get up slowly, you'll be able to sense yourself better. And if you sense yourself better, you'll be less likely to immediately go back into an old habit of how you normally get up. So just be more thoughtful about it. And when you're ready, just come on up. We're going to head back to that chair that we started in. Take your time. We have time. All right, so everyone's getting set up with their chairs, hopefully in front of the camera. <laughs> and, and you're gonna position yourself at the edge of the chair again with your feet flat on the floor. So you may have a different experience now about how your back supports your neck and shoulders. Just check in, get an overall sense of how you're sitting now. So we did spend a great deal of time today with the feet and pelvis, and that's on purpose. Um, when your head can be supported by the lower part of you, you really don't have to give as much effort being um, holding up your head with your neck muscles. So we're really kind of bringing that work into the stronger muscles around the core and around the pelvis to take the strain off the smaller muscles of the neck. So really we're just finding that nice stacking of our posture um, over our pelvis. So we're gonna do that movement where you're gonna just easily, gently turn over one side, turn to look over the other side, whatever's comfortable. So think of all the elements we worked with on the floor. We're basically in that same position when you were on your floor with your knees bent and your feet flat, you're just moved to a chair. So it's the same movement. So think about how your feet can help, just like you did where your foot pushed into the floor and it turned your pelvis and it turned your spine and then it turned your head and then it turned your eyes. Think about doing that, but in this seated configuration. So really, Push, let's everyone together, let's identify our right foot. I'm gonna push through that right foot. It's gonna shift that right knee forward in space a little bit. It's gonna turn that pelvis to the left, rotating the spine, rotating the shoulders until it gets to our head. Yeah, so really using our whole self to turn and look around our axis. Yeah, and then do the same thing on the left side. Great. Just seeing how that can coordinate together. And because we like to do experiments, go ahead and stop in the middle. Ignore the fact that you have feet down there. Ignore the fact that you have a pelvis <laughs> and just look over one side, look over the other side and see where that movement comes from and why maybe that's not as um, efficient where you're using a lot more muscle to do the work and then come back to the foot. So come back to that way where the foot really guides that rotation of the pelvis where everything is moving. Yeah. Great. So your homework throughout the week is just to increase your awareness of um, how you hold yourself during the day, especially if you're on a lot of computer conference calls, whatnot. Um, if you find that you revert back to your habit, 
which is totally normal, which is usually kind of, for most of us, kind of hunched forward, head goes forward. Um, you may not realize that you're in that habit, but what's gonna be a, an indicator for you would be discomfort, pain, maybe creeping in, eye strain. And that'll be like, oh shoot, maybe I should uh, check in and see how I'm doing. So that's your homework is the awareness component. When you feel that, see if you can come back to the, some of the ideas that we went through today where you're stacking yourself up over your sits bones. You can just do a few of these nice gentle rotations that we went through where your feet are really part of it and your pelvis is really part of lining your head up over everything. Um, sometimes it just needs a couple rounds of that just to reset everything. You don't have to necessarily lie on the floor and do the whole lesson to get that back in your body because you've done this for the last hour. Yeah. So if you are ready you can come up to stand see how your um self is stacking up over your feet it might feel a little different you can walk around your room a little bit see how that feels great so hopefully you can still hear me you're not walking too far away um next week we'll be back same time friday at four Pacific time. And also if you are want to try a morning, it's the same class, that'll be Monday. So that's Monday the 25th. So that's in a couple days. Um, that's at 8 a.m. Pacific time, the same class. Um, we'll just continue to expand on this theme of kind of releasing the work of the neck and the shoulders um, to find increased comfort. So that is it.